What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Isaiah here. And in this video, I just want to go over follow-up, how often you should follow up, when should you follow up, what type of lead should you follow up on, who should you not follow up, how often should you follow up, things like that, and what to say when you follow up, okay? So let's go over it right now. I'm going to share my screen. And if you want to work with me directly, have me coach you help you get a deal in 90 days or less. You could be my student, join the Discord. If you want to join the Discord, email me. My email is going to be in the description. All right, so let's go over it. This is from one of the morning meetings in the Discord. All right, the fortune is in the follow-up. More than 90% of your deals that you close are going to be from follow-up. I feel like that's really 100% of the deals are going to be from follow-up. Okay. All right. Well, you're going to have one call closes, but even on the one call closes, when you first phone call, you get them to sign the contract, right? Because that's what how my Zillow script is set up. You get them to sign the first phone call, you still got to follow up with them, right? You still got to check up on them, things like that. On average, it takes about 15 follow-up calls to close a deal. Where did I get that number from? I made it up. I made it up, but I'm saying like, there's like a saying that it takes at least 15 follow-up calls for you to close a deal. I think it's more than that though. I think it's like 30 or something, but at least 15. All right. My first deal took about 25 phone calls, follow-up phone calls for me to sign the contract. At least 25 follow-up calls for me to even sign the contract. And I'm talking about my first wholesale deal. Okay. If they don't accept your first offer, it's okay. It's okay. A lot of Beginner wholesalers make the mistake of trying to please the seller with their offer. Bro, we're not here to please the seller. We're here to close a deal. We're here to solve problems, okay? And we're here to close a deal, all right? So don't try to please the seller with your offer. If you try to please the seller with your offer, who's going to buy it? Who's going to buy the deal? Nobody. If you have to do a creative offer, that's different. But if you're making a cash offer, nine times out of 10, the first offer you, you make should offend them. That's just what it is. If you didn't offend them on the first uh, offer that you make, you probably didn't offer low enough. Okay. Usually if they accept the first offer for me, I'm like, dang, I could have went lower. I didn't offer low enough. Dang. So that's something to keep in mind. Rule of thumb. If they're not offended on the first offer, you didn't offer low enough. Okay, 99.9% .9 of the time, they should not accept your first offer. Like I said, if they do accept your first offer, you didn't offer low enough. If they're not even offended, you didn't offer low enough. It's better to have a good offer rejected than a bad offer accepted. That's 100% true. Always keep that in mind. You don't want to try to please the seller with your offer, right? Because if you get a bad offer accepted... Now what? You're stuck with a bad offer that just got accepted from the seller. Now you have to tell them the bad news. Uh, it can't work because I gave you a bad offer, right? You're going you're gonna to bring the bad offer to the buyers and the buyers aren't even going to respond to you because it's a stupid deal, right? It's better to have a good offer rejected than a bad offer accepted. Uh, no deal is better than a bad deal, 100%. No deal is better than a bad deal. A bad deal will cause a lawsuit. A bad deal will cause you to burn bridges, right? You don't want bad deals. You want good deals. You want deals. Be confident with your offer that it's an offer that you could bring to the closing table. I don't know how I worded this, but my point in saying is give an offer that you're confident with. You're like, that's a good, I, I, I know that's a deal at that price, that type of offer. Like, I'm good with that offer because I know that if they accept that offer, I could bring that to the closing table. So it's better to have a good offer rejected than a bad offer accepted. Okay. This all goes into follow up. You want to form a friendship and build a relationship, separate yourself from the other wholesalers because 99% of all these wholesalers are on Zillow calling all these leads, whoever. And they're just asking about the house, making an offer quick, low ball cash offer, no friendship, no relationship, nothing. You need to build a relationship, form a friendship, separate yourself. So when they do come to reality and they do get desperate and they do want to sell their house at a lower price, they'll think of you first. That's what you want, right? 99% of these sellers right now, they're still drunk on the whole 20, 2021 run, bull run of the housing market, right? That's over. 
sellers, they still, a lot of sellers still need to come down to reality and understand, hey, the market is crashing. And this year specifically, it's really about to crash. Okay. So when they do come to reality, they think of you because you're the one that they formed a friendship with. You're the one that took the time out of your day, out of the phone call to ask about their family, their friends, their kids, their dog, their wife, their hospital bills, their family, their moving trip, their vacation, all that, all that. Okay. You want to relate to them. You want to form a genuine friendship. I always tell them that. I always tell my students that. Boom. You just got on the phone with a seller and they just got on the phone with their best friend and they didn't even know it. Boom. I'm your new best friend. You didn't even know it. Did you? Nope. But guess what? We're here. We're best friends now. What's up, buddy? So form that friendship. It's always worth it. They're going to think of you first when they get desperate. Okay. Let them know that you care, but you're still there to do business. Ask about all the stuff, house, wife, kids, things like that. But also let them know this is, this is where I need to be at. This is where me and my partners say that we need to be at. Okay. Check up on them. Ask about their life, family, and how's it going. This is very important. When you follow up, don't always ask about the house. Don't do that. That's the last thing you want to do. All the beginner wholesalers are out here following up, asking about the house. They call them up in 30 days, 90 days, whatever, six months, and they're like, hey, you want to sell the house yet? Okay, bye. House? No. Okay, bye. Don't do that. Just be like, hey, Merry Christmas. Or send them a text, hey, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope you're doing good. You know, a lot of these sellers sometimes are going or selling their house because they're going through something. A lot of the sellers I've been talking to recently, they have cancer. Okay, their family members have died. Their, their parents died, right? Or they're moving to get closer to their family, things like that. Or, or they're selling the house because they know they're about to die and they want to give it to their kids, the proceeds to the kids or whatever. Ask about that stuff. Like, hey, I hope the cancer is getting better. Hey, how are you doing? Are you good? How's the radiation going? Or, or how's the move going? Or how's you and the kids? Something like that. Ask about that. Don't always ask about the freaking house. Screw the house, dude. 80% of the conversation should be about the seller. 20% should be about the house. Okay, that's a fact. 80-20 rule. A lot of these wholesalers are talking 80% about the house and 20% about the seller because they suck. That's why they can't be on the phone for longer than eight minutes, 10 minutes. Okay. When you give my Zillow, when you give my Zillow script offer, you should be on the phone at least, at least 30 minutes. Okay. If you're speeding through the script, if you're giving them an offer in 10 minutes, it's because you suck. You don't know how to build rapport. Sorry, not sorry. Right? If you're if you're calling a seller and giving them an offer within 10 minutes without even looking at the house, bro, you suck. Right? You're just they're gonna throw you in the bunch in the batch with all the other beginner sucky wholesalers. You want to stand out, you want to separate yourself, ask about them. 80% about the seller, 20% about the house, okay? 80% building value, 20% about the close. 80% of their time spent building value, 20% closing. Maybe even 10% closing, okay? Because if you do the 80% right of building value, the 20% of closing should be easy. If you do the building rapport stuff right the first time, the close should be easy. Okay, track everything, put everything into your notes. All right, if you have a CRM, do that. Organize your notes, set follow up dates, when to follow up with people after they reject your offer, follow up in a week, two weeks, whatever, based on how the conversation went. This is my sequence that I use three days, one week, two weeks, 30 days, then 90 days, then six months, then a year. That's the sequence I use. Sequence I use uh, based on how the phone call went, based on how the conversation went, I might start off with, okay, 30 days. I might start off, if they're really hot, I do every three days, sometimes every day, right? Then I go to week, two weeks, then I go to 30 days, 90 days, six months, and a year. You can write this down. This is the sequence that I use, but usually if it's a good lead, even if they rejected my offer, which they should reject my offer the first time, every three days I'm following up. Okay, how's that going? How's that going? How's that going? Uh, I just I just had, I just texted a guy. Um, I, uh, 
I was texting him because he was he he was asking too much for his property. It's a deal, right? It could be a deal, and I have buyers in that area, but he's just asking way too much for his property. And you know, one time he told me, ah, "I found a buyer, quick." I'm like, "Congratulations, that's awesome, man! Great, you know, no hard feelings. I'm great, awesome. I'm glad you got to sell your property. Hallelujah! That's a that's amazing." Okay, I just went to go check on Zillow today, looking at houses. His house is still up there. I'm like, hmm. I texted him like, hey man, happy New Year's. Did you sell did you sell the house? And he's like, nah, man, I didn't sell the house. Now who's he thinking about? Me. We have a genuine friendship. That guy's actually cool. Right? But now he's thinking about, like, man, I gotta sell this house. Let me just let me just give it to this guy. He's cool. He cares. Right? He's serious. Let me give it to him. Follow up. The fortune is in the follow up. Okay. If you don't care about your customers, your competitors will. I don't know who said that, but that's a that's a good quote. Okay. Um, I would suggest writing these notes down. Okay. I make these every day in the Discord meeting. Again, if you want to join the Discord, just email me. My email is going to be in the description. <clears throat> I hope you all got some value out of this. All right. If you did, make sure to like, comment if you have uh, an idea of what you want me to drop a video about. Or if you just have any questions, I can make a video about it. All right. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Every day I'm dropping gems about wholesaling real estate, self-improvement, just life in general. All right. Stay motivated.